Overall, there are 300 research projects at Technion on various aspects of uh, nanoscience and uh, nanotechnology. One very interesting project is carried out by Hossam Hayek. He is developing a very small, inexpensive nanosensors that can sense small molecules emitted by, by a person when that person just exhales air. It turns out that people who are sick in different uh, diseases including, by the way, it is not disease, but including people who suffer from cancer, they emit a very uh, uh, kind of specific uh, uh, signature of those molecules. So by an analyzing the, the small molecule content in the patient's breath, it should be possible to tell what kind of disease that person has, what's the stage, and so on and so forth. Hossam focuses on detecting and characterizing cancer. And this is a very promising technology because it's going to be inexpensive enough and simple enough to be operated in the doctor's uh, office. We consider this interface between life sciences and man-made engineering, if you like, a very promising uh, uh, direction. In our next phase, we, we are planning on investing uh, a very, signif very significant uh, funds into that uh, field in collaboration with the uh, life science and engineering project headed here by uh, Professor Chekhanov, our one of our two Nobel laureates. Let me give you a completely different uh, example which that relates in fact to energy. So uh, you, you may take uh, the work uh, done by Dr. Giti Frey in our materials engineering department. And one of the topics she has been pursuing is a completely new type of white, white light emitters. You may know that lighting consumes approximately 10% of the global energy consumption. But most of our light sources are inefficient. So you get very little light for, for, for that energy. And there is a large effort done worldwide trying to uh, invent completely new light sources that will replace the existing light sources and will produce light at much higher efficiencies. And Giti's device is a very, very sophisticated device that emits white light. In fact, this would be a completely different aspect of nanotechnology. Of course, I could count here many, many more examples for uh, in diagnostics, in medical diagnostics, many medical therapeutics, for instance, uh, we have extensive research in drug delivery, how to uh, encapsulate drugs in uh, nano-size capsules, and so to speak, write the address on those capsules, just launch them, let them drift, uh, hook up to their target and release the drug in a controlled way over extended periods of, of time. My own research focuses at the interface between nanoelectronics and molecular biology. What we are trying to do in collaboration with the Professor Joram Reiter here at our biology department, Professor Reiter is an immunologist, we are trying to develop strategies, generic strategies, how for instance to turn on and off biological processes uh, by an electronic signal presented to the system, but at the level of a single molecule, not, not on the a level of, a, of uh, on the cellular level and so on, as is done today already with, uh, let's say, neurons or, or cardiac cells, but at a much much smaller uh, at a much much smaller scale. And recently, we made a very significant uh, progress in that uh, direction. We created what I believe to be the first real functional interface between these two foreign uh, uh, worlds.